Ever wondered which gear Shaxx would approve of? Well, today Zer's got it. He's got some great items for PvE and PvP alike. He's even got three different swords up for sale, my man. Spoilers though, there are no exotic class items up for sale this week. I'm honestly surprised Bungie let us down in this manner since we're still weeks away from Revenant and being able to focus for exotic class perks, but... Oh well, let's get back to what's available from Zer today. Another Friday, another Zer day, let's see what he's got. Polaris Lance Catalyst. Precision kills create an elemental damage explosion. Okay, that one's actually pretty good. I would pick this up if you have the weapon. Le Monarch Catalyst. Rapidly defeating targets triggers health regeneration. Guardians and powerful combatants count as more than one kill. So this is a really good catalyst as well. I already have this one. And just in case you're unaware, Le Monarch is an exotic combat bow that shoots out poison arrows. So definitely pick this up. It's a good catalyst and it's a strong weapon to use. All right, so he's got Gwisin Vest for the hunters, Mask of the Quiet One for us titans, and Prometheum Spur for the warlocks. All right, let's take a look. Mask of the Quiet One, wow. 27 resilience is really good. I wish intellect and strength were swapped out. But you know, 12 in strength, we can work with that. Gain ability energy when you're damaged. When critical, heal on kills. So in and of itself, it's not a strong exotic helmet, but if you're creative enough, you can definitely make a build around this item, which I'm going to challenge myself to do. So that's my challenge. You guys are hearing it. I'm going to try to make a build using this Mask of the Quiet One. But okay, moving on. Unfortunately, no exotic class items this week. I was hoping they would just keep selling those exotic items because we can't focus them yet. So may as well just sell them for strange coins until there is a way for us to focus them. But apparently Bungie thought differently and they are not selling that this week. Okay, um, he's got Gambit Engrams. I mean... I like playing Gambit, so I don't have a shortage of these Ingrams, but but if there's still some items you want to purchase from the Drifter and you need some Gambit Ingrams, here you go. The Hawk Moon again. This one has Extended Barrel, Alloy Magazine, Surplus, Heavy Grip. You know, it's not the worst roll I've seen for Hawk Moon, so he sells this every week, but if you don't have it yet, go ahead and pick this one up. It's not bad. And if you get the Catalyst, um, I mean, if you already have the Catalyst and you know it gets increased magazine size, Grants increased handling, reload speed, and weapon range based on the number of stacks of paracausal charge. Okay, we've got Vigilance Wing. This is a pulse rifle. This weapon fires a five round burst. When a nearby ally is killed, gain health regeneration and increased movement speed. So obviously this is not great for solo content because you won't have any allies nearby. If you run solo, I wouldn't take this. Let's see here. Last stand, improved weapon performance and greatly increased recovery when its wielder is the last living member of a fire team. So this isn't really for PvE content, this is more of a PvP type weapon, but if you're finding yourself in a lot of situations where you're the last guardian standing, then you know, go ahead and try this one out. This will be fun. Okay, Lord of Wolves, we got a solar shotgun here. Fires a powerful short range burst of solar damage. Release of the Wolves. Greatly increases rate of fire and shoots in full auto. So this weapon doesn't get a lot of use nowadays. They're just weapons that do better damage and shotguns are up close and you don't really want to be up close and master and GM content if you can avoid it. So that's why people don't really run this shotgun and I would save your strange coins for something else. Okay, Black Talon. Well, this weapon would have been really good about a month or so ago when they gave us infinite ammo on our heavy swords for doing ritual activities. But anyways, fire a heavy projectile attack. Heavy attacks are stronger with full energy. So if you're like me and you're a sword nut, you want to get all the swords in the game and find out ways to put them in your builds. So I love this weapon. Go ahead and pick it up if you like using swords and you want a way to shoot out projectiles even stronger than the caster frames already do. Go ahead and buy this one. Plus it has tireless blades, so as long as you're getting kills, you're actually getting some ammo back. So if you're using this in conjunction with blade stamina on the seasonal artifact, then you'll have lots of ammo and you'll feel really good throwing out these projectile attacks and getting ammo back on kills. All right, and then we got Gallahorn, the classic Gallahorn here, Wolfpack rounds. Rounds fired split into a tracking cluster, missiles upon detonation. Okay, Gallahorn as Pack Hunter gain increased handling and reload speed when standing near allies. Firing this weapon also grounds wolf pack rounds to nearby allies wielding non-exotic rocket launchers. So this is good if you're in a fire team that communicates with one another and you plan to bring rocket launchers into your activity. It's a strong rocket launcher on its own, but obviously it really shines when you're in a fire team 
This is just a classic rocket launcher from Destiny 1 days, so if you don't have it, I highly recommend you pick this one up. You won't regret it. It's a fun item, plus it's got a lot of nostalgia to it. So now onto the legendary weapons, we have Legal Action 2 Pulse Rifle. This one has Surplus and Adrenaline Junkie. That's actually pretty good rolls. Obviously, Adrenaline Junkie is always great as a damage perk on a weapon. Final blows with this or your grenades increases your damage. It stacks up to 5, I believe, times 5. Surplus is alright. Um, the fact that you get a faster reload speed is good because that means you'll get more usage out of your Adrenaline Junkie before it drops off. Uh, you'll be able to reload your weapon and keep on hitting enemies with that extra damage. So if I were to buy this weapon, I would go full bore for the increased range here and accurize rounds for the increased range there as well. And what's really good about this weapon is it has surplus, so you get increased reload speed for each fully charged ability, plus this has a reload speed masterwork. So if you have full abilities, you know, your grenade, your super, and your melee, and you have this all the way to tier 10, you're going to be reloading super fast. So you'll have max efficiency on Adrenaline Junkie, which, which is awesome. So I would definitely pick this one up. Okay, next we have Spare Rations with Moving Target, Kinetic Tremors, Increased Movement Speed and Target Acquisition when moving while aiming down sight. So that's pretty good for PvP. Kinetic Tremors, Sustained Kinetic Damage to a Target, emits a Shockwave that damages any nearby targets. And this is a PvE trait. So it's kind of split up, so that means it's not going to be strong in either or, it's just going to be middle of the pack. Disaster Plan. Picking up ammunition increases this weapon's flinch resistance and range, which lasts until it is fired again. Swords gain a large increase to charge rate instead. So the problem I see here is that there's not enough synergy between these two traits, and the Origin trait is not going to help you very much either in PvE. So no, I would pass on this one. The perks aren't just good enough for this weapon. Let's go on to Wishbringer, Solar Shotgun. Pulse Monitor and Opening Shot automatically reloads the magazine and improves weapon handling when wounded, even when this weapon is stowed. So these perks are alright for PvP just because it has Opening Shot. You get that extra range when you slide in and sneak up on someone and try to take them out with the shotgun. Pulse Monitor, you know, it could be better if it was Slide Shot or something else like that. I mean, it's not bad the fact that you automatically reload your magazine as you take damage. So you don't have to waste time manually reloading in the middle of a gunfight with the Guardian. So you know, go ahead and pick this one up if you're a PvP player and you don't have a Solar Shotgun already. There's definitely better ones, but this one is not bad. Okay, 7 Seraph CQC12, another Solar Shotgun. Interesting. Auto Loading Holster, okay, interesting. Trench Barrel, after a successful melee hit, this weapon gains increased damage, handling, and reload speed for a short duration, or until 3 shots are fired. So shotguns don't get a lot of play in PvE right now, they're not in meta, especially not, not this one right here. Nah, honestly, these two rolls are not it. I wouldn't pick this one up. Save your strange coins for something else. Okay, Temptations Hook. Enduring Guard. Alright, Relentless Strikes and On Guard. Does it have Jagged Edge? Okay, so you get max uh, blade or max damage if you take Jagged Edge as your blade. Uh, Sword Master's Guard, always good for the increased charge rate. Relentless Strikes, this is nice. After landing three light attack hits within a short time, you get sword ammo back, always nice. On guard is kind of hard to use. Quick attacks immediately after swapping to this sword do additional damage. So it's not bad if you fight these melee type bosses like, um, like Rathal for example, but he has that melee attack which is heavily telegraphed. So you can use this almost like a parry. You know, you put your block up right away and once you block his attack, you start retaliating with your own and you have increased damage during that short period. Yeah, you, obviously you know I love swords, and this is an art caster frame, so if you don't have one already, I recommend you pick this one up. Getting your sword ammo back after 3 strikes, and getting a damage buff after blocking an attack. There's definitely better perks you could get here besides on guard, but this isn't bad. I would definitely pick this one up if you don't have this sword already. Okay, we have Behringer's Memory, Pulse Monitor, Shield Disorients. Let's see here. Energy Matched, Shield Explosion Disorients Nearby Combatants. Honestly, no, this is not going to be a great roll. Even on the activities where you know the type of shields enemies are going to use, I wouldn't waste a slot on having this void grenade launcher when there are things like edge transit out there. You don't need something just to disorient when you can kill them so much faster with other weapons, so I wouldn't waste your strange coins on this. That's going to be a pass on Behringer's memory. Okay, and we have a crown splitter for titans. Let's take a look here. Do we have jagged edge? Yes, we do. Okay, heavy guard. That's fine. Flash counter. Melee blocked immediately after guarding disorients and weakens the attacker. So like I mentioned earlier when we were talking about Temptation's hook, 
If you're against a boss that's slow and has telegraphed attacks, this isn't bad. This actually this is actually slightly better than on guard because this actually makes them weaker. Yeah, so if you manage to activate this perk, they're gonna take an additional 20% damage for four seconds. So that, plus the fact that you have Whirlwind Blade, which means that rapid sword strikes increase this weapon's damage for a short duration. That's perfect because you are able to block their attack. They become disoriented and weakened, meaning they take an additional 20% damage. And then you add on the, the damage buff from Whirlwind Blade, which stacks up to 10 times for a 30% damage buff. That's pretty crazy. So only take this if you're against slow melee type bosses to get the most use out of it. Or obviously take this if you have Stronghold, which is a great exotic item. And you want to use this to block since you have Heavy Guard. And it's an aggressive frame sword, which means this has the best blocking in the game. Go ahead and take this and use it to demolish champions and use it to demolish bosses. I would go ahead and pick this one up if you don't have a strong crown splitter that has Whirlwind Blade already. This one is pretty good. Okay, Legendary Armor. Let's take a look here. Sovereign Gauntlets. 18 mobility, 6 resilience. That's going to be pass. You don't want these. The stats aren't for you. 21 resilience, 15 to strength. It would have been nice if that intellect spike was somewhere else like recovery or discipline. But even still, this is a pretty good spread. Yeah, you can go ahead and take this if you don't have something that has better stats already. Okay, Sovereign Helm. 18 resilience, 24 strength. This is actually really good. Yeah, and it's got the 11 to recovery. I'd go ahead and pick this one up ASAP if you don't have a helmet with better stats already. Or if you just like the way it looks. Okay, and the leg armor. 18 resilience, 12 strength with a 19 to intellect. So unfortunately, this is borderline on strength, and I would say no, go ahead and pass. Just because there's way too much stats and intellect, you really should have them in discipline, or preferably in strength. The spikes are too skewed into stats that you're not going to use, so I would go ahead and pass on this. But definitely, pick up the helm, pick up the chest piece. I would go ahead and pick up this whole set because it looks great and we don't really have exotic class items this week to spend our strange coins on. So if you're running a lot of vanguard activities and you find yourself with some extra coins and you've already purchased this crown splitter and you've already purchased black talon as well as galahorn, you know what? You might look into purchasing these for the fashion and for the transmog. You could potentially look into farming these exotic ciphers this week. They are pretty expensive at 79 a piece. But if you find yourself really low on ciphers and you're trying to upgrade a lot of your exotics into artifice, yeah, maybe not a bad time. Again, since there's no exotic items, you may as well spend your coins on something worthwhile. And if you already have the armor, you already have the weapons you want, this may be the way to go. All right, so that's going to do it for this week. I hope you all have a great weekend and I will catch you all next time.